so happy Valentine's Day. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about love, and that's our, our theme is love. So Valentine's Day, I love uh, my mom, I love my dad, I love my family, I love my brothers, and I love my future wife, I love my future children, I love all my friends. And, and I notice it's really easy to love people who love you. But when Jesus said, love your enemies, that's really difficult. And that's, that's I mean, you, you say it's easy, but is it really easy? Uh, Otto, homeboy, can you go to Matthew 5.43, please? Good looking out. 5.43 of Matthew. Awesomeness. Uh, I'm going to read a few verses here. It says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? And are, are not even the tax collectors doing that? If, if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So as I said, our theme is proclaiming the love of God in our communities. And I was, I was, as I was thinking about this, I suddenly realized the best way to proclaim love to the community is to actually love people. And I'm not saying just mere words, and I'm not saying just following certain techniques, but genuinely and actually have authentic love for people. And of course, it's not easy. Not, not easy at all. How can I love somebody who doesn't like me? How can I love somebody who's prejudiced against me? How can I love somebody who's taken advantage of me? Or who is offended by me? Or who, who has offended me? How can I love that person? As I said, it's not easy. But let's look at an example. There's this, there's this one girl. She was the daughter of an Albanian grocer. And at the age of 18, she went to Calcutta, to the slums. And she... She, she was known for picking up children in garbage dumps who have all kinds of diseases and whatnot. And this, this girl, she's Mother Teresa. And she had a lot of love for her community. And for me, her life reveals where it all starts, where all this love starts. So, when you ask Mother Teresa, Hey, Mother Teresa, just in case you have a conversation with Mother Teresa, where do you get your motivation from? And she says, I see Jesus in every human being. I say to myself, this year, this is hungry Jesus. I must feed him. This is sick Jesus. This is the Jesus with leprosy and gangrene. And I serve because I love Jesus. So when I first read this quote, it totally changed my perspective on life. Because to be honest, I, I, as a Christian, I might be a little self-righteous sometimes. If I'm driving down over to my, uh, Inglewood Church and I'm downtown, and I see some homeless people living on the street inside cardboard boxes, I often look at them and I'm judging. I'm, I'm sure many of you are judging like this too. Maybe I'm just judging you for being judging. But I, I would look at them and I would think, look at these people. They're, they probably deserve it. They're probably drug addict. That one right there, drug addict, lazy. I'm not pointing at you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> that one's a criminal. Smooth criminal. Yeah, but I mean, okay, I'm saying all these things, but these were these are just my poor excuses for not doing anything or for not wanting to do anything. For, for not even wanting to help, not wanting to pray for them. That's me making up excuses, so I don't have to help. But Mother Teresa's philosophy of ministry, it's completely different. It's a completely different vision of ministry. And so since then, my vision of ministry is Jesus. So let me explain. Now that I have Mother Teresa's vision, thanks Mother Teresa, I see Jesus in every human being. That's what she said. Now I can confidently say that I saw Jesus last week. Ooh, you're surprised, huh? I saw Jesus last week, and he was over at the Inglewood Church that I was just talking about. He was wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt, and he was just at the old building that most of us would call church, and he was just there working hard. And for a minute, he looked like one of the people I regularly attend church with, but I'm pretty sure it was Jesus. And I could tell by the way he smiled. And interestingly enough, I saw Jesus this morning. Did you see this? I saw Jesus this morning. He was in my kitchen. I was like, getting excited because, oh my goodness, Jesus is in my kitchen. He was making breakfast for me, and he was cooking eggs for my family. And for a minute, he looked like my mom, but I think it was Jesus. I'm pretty sure it was Jesus because I could feel the love coming from his heart. And this afternoon, I saw Jesus. Afternoon, yeah, I wrote this the other day. So This afternoon, I saw Jesus. 
he was cutting the grass at the community that I saw, and he looked like just some random stranger that I knew. But <laughs> random stranger that I knew. Also. He looked like some random stranger cutting grass. <laughs> but the way he was smiling and waving at strangers, I'm pretty sure that he was Jesus. And for a minute, I uh, thought it was just a random person, but it was Jesus. I'm confident about that. No one else has that much more joy than Jesus. Uh, Mr. Smith Criminal, can you go to Matthew 25, 35, please? Matthew 35, no, I'm just kidding, Matthew 25, 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. I was turning the page. <laughs> then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or are thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you, when did we see you sick or uh, in prison and go to visit you? And the king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of these, or one of, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devils and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you never invited me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, but you did not look after me. And they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger needing clothes, or sick in prison? And did not help you. When do we ever do that? And he will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of these, you did not do for me. And then they will go to eternal punishment. But the righteous will go to eternal life. So I saw Jesus last night. He was, he was sitting out in the street and he was looking for someone to help him. And for a minute he just looked like another homeless person. But it was Jesus. And I could tell by the look of sincere suffering in his eyes that it was Jesus. I see Jesus everywhere now. He was taking food to the sick. He was welcoming others to his home, being friendly to those who need love. And just for a minute, I think he's someone I know. And the other day, uh, or actually this morning, I saw Jesus at the convalescent home. And he was there feeling sick and lonely and hoping for a friend to just give him a visit. And... and now, now that I've talked about this, just this morning when I woke up, I, I was getting ready, you know, making my hair look all nice, and I looked in the mirror, and I thought about it, how do I look to the people when, how do I look to people who meet me? What do, what do I look like? Do I look like you? Of course, uh, let's talk about Mother Teresa's motivation. Her motivation came from Lord Jesus. Uh, if you want to go to another verse, Matthew 9, 36. Matthew 9, 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, and they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Do we see the crowds that Jesus sees? That's the end of the verse. Did we see the crowds that Jesus see, sees? That's a question that I've been asking myself now. In the case of Jesus, it starts all with seeing. And in seeing, he had compassion. Now, I have to admit that it is very possible and I do this all the time, to look at something and not see anything at all, to just look at something and only see the thing, but not look anywhere deeper. Just to see the, the crowds of the world, but really see the crowds of the world, it takes something else. It takes something that's deeper inside. It means replacing my insides with the presence of Jesus. It means redefining my view of humanity. So, I mean, let's admit it. By nature, we tend to hang out with people who look like us, who talk like us, who act, right, think, and move like us, but we love our friends, we love our friends, we love our families, and we love our buddies, and that's not necessarily wrong, but it limits us, and it limits us from seeing people who are not like us, and it limits us from becoming like Jesus. Uh, for example, have you ever had this happen, you're, you're walking in a crowd, and you feel alone, even as it's really crowded, but you kind of feel alone, and you're overwhelmed, but then you see a friend that you know, and you get excited, so you focus in on your friend, and then suddenly, you block the whole crowd out. You're only thinking about your friend, and, and you don't see anyone else. As many people, as many faces as there are, you only see your friend. And that, that's what our nature is. We, we see what we, like, what we feel comfortable with. But that's our habit. It's just our habit. But if we're ever going to see the crowds the same way that Jesus saw crowds, we must 
open our eyes, and we have to break that, that barrier, break that mold, because Jesus saw something that his disciples never saw. And were they blind? Were the disciples blind? No, but they just didn't see what Jesus saw. And when this happens, when we block the crowds out like that, we don't feel what Jesus feels. And the compassion for the crowd is now absent, and we miss ministering with Jesus. We need Jesus in our lives so that we can exercise compassion to the needy ones. Amen?